when you reach the summit, four years of trying, you finally, that moment, what was that moment like for you? A little embarrassing, actually. I, <laughs> I fell down and just started bawling my eyes out right on the summit because it was like, oh, so, so long um, and so hard. Uh, I had so much deep snow this year because of the warm weather it piles up lots of deep snow up on Denali and so um, I had to in the beginning stages of the expedition pull a sled through that deep snow and then on the high part of the mountain where you would expect little snow there was still a lot of snow so it was a lot of uh, just um, plowing through deep snow even as high up as uh, uh, 19,000 feet so I was pretty played out by the time I actually got up there um, and my biggest um, I, what I told myself is that if I'm not there by two I turn around and I got there just at two and uh, only only spent ten minutes on the summit I took a couple I took two really good circles and good views of the rest of uh, Alaska Alaska's summits and ranges uh, um, and then um, got a good picture in, in my brain and then I uh, started heading down what was the weather like up there the day you reached the summit? Um, in the morning, it was uh, pretty blustery. So by the, uh, when I left the tent at 5 a.m., uh, it was pretty windy and stuff. And I thought, well, I'm all dressed up. I might as well just keep going and see what the day, how the day plays out. And um, um, the day started improving, and it stayed good all the way to the summit. And then after I left the summit, according to uh, Paul Roderick at Keaton Air Taxi, uh, the winds picked up at the summit uh, considerably right after I left. So it was a good thing I got there when I did. Just a very serendipitous year for you, just with the weather and everything. Um, yeah, I, or maybe was, not. I don't know. Was I, it, how, how was the weather on the, the entire the rest of the way? Uh, the, the, the weather has been uh, very fickle, as it has been everywhere in Alaska, right? Uh, I mean, uh, um, it was, what, 35 degrees here in Telkeetna today, um, and it's middle of January, it just shouldn't be. And so uh, that creates a lot of uh, adverse weather that you, you just can't rely on or count on. And so that's what makes Denali so difficult, is that the, the weather changes by the hour. So you've accomplished this dream that you've had four years in the making. What do you do now? Uh, I go back to Minnesota and uh, garden and feed my chickens and, you know, <laughs> take it easy for a while. Uh, but uh, maybe even go on a vacation somewhere that's actually warm. I don't know. I'll we'll see. But uh, um, I just, I'm just going to relax for a while. I've been focused for so long on Denali. I'm just going to just um, uh, chill a bit, spend more time with family and friends, and, um, and something will come come up down the road. You're a guy who can't stay can't stay idle for too long, I feel like. Well, I'm not going to be doing any big projects like Denali again. Uh, probably uh, be as, uh, smaller projects, uh, maybe um, uh, and maybe four or five years down the road I'll do something in Antarctica, I'm not sure yet. But uh, right now it's just chilling and doing a little traveling. I feel like you've probably earned it. Yeah, I think I'm going <laughs> to just uh, chill for a while and, uh, and uh, just uh, just relax, and uh, I got some other adventures uh, that are not related to uh, climbing or running around by dog sled or ski or anything like that. So uh, those will keep me busy. What were some of your favorite moments from your trip this year? Did you have anything? I mean, obviously the summit, but anything besides that that really sticks out? Yeah, I had a raven follow me uh, from uh, let's see, about uh, seven thousand feet, seventy. 7,800 feet all the way up to 16,000. Uh, just kind of followed me, and I and I think he just wanted some food, which I gave him a little food actually. I flipped him a little, a few crackers here and there, just keep him, keep him around and keep me company, which was kind of nice. And I have a special uh, place in my heart for Raven, so that was nice to have him along the, the major part of the trip. A little company, so you're not too lonely. Maybe. Exactly. Does it get pretty lonely up there? I mean, you were up there for almost a almost a month. Yeah, and then and then to do it over the holidays is is can be difficult. So it, it, you just have to be um, um, mindful of that and kind of push it to the side and 
and then deal with that when you get back. And so I'll just have a later Christmas and a, a later New Year's when I get back home. What was the feeling when you saw everybody when they arrived at base camp uh, today to pick you up? I know they tried yesterday and weren't quite successful. What was that feeling today when you actually got to see everybody? Well, that was that was really nice. Yesterday was kind of like getting the rug pulled out, but I knew the weather was coming in and I tried not to get my hopes up and sure enough the weather turned bad enough where they couldn't land. Um, so I just made the most of uh, the, that this evening and just uh, um, got things squared away in my camp, and and um, it looked like we had a window this morning, and I called Paul, and it we did, and so uh, they came in, and it's really nice to see everybody again, and uh, a lot of people that have been push, pushing and supporting our project for quite a few years now. Hey, you got your sponsors here that came in to pick you up. That's going to be pretty exciting for them to yeah. be a part of this as well. Here in America, Hearing Plans and Granite Gear and Primal Off are my three main sponsors. And they've uh, they've been supporting me not just uh, this year, but the last few years. And uh, and um, couldn't, have, couldn't have been possible without those folks because these trips are expensive. And, uh, yeah, and it's always good to have people... People on your side when the, when the rubber hits the road, you know, it's always good to have uh, good friends and folks around uh, that have been uh, behind you all these all these years, actually. It's been far now. So when you were at base camp, when they picked you up, I know Stevie yesterday had a salad for you. Did you get your salad and beer today? <laughs> I did. I did. I got a big salad and I got a nice beer and I even had one of uh, one of those uh, caramel, caramel rolls. They were was pretty good actually. But a salad, oh, I, you really miss uh, fruit and uh, salads because um, when you're up there you're just eating uh, processed dehydrated food basically and when you can get some fresh it's, it's amazing. Um, you got some pretty good pictures and video on your way up too? Uh, well we don't know yet, we haven't downloaded anything yet. <laughs> so I'm working on that so that's kind of uh, going to be a nice little uh, surprise for us. Hopefully there's some good stuff there. Oh, anything else I left out? Anything else you want to add that we should know about? Um, uh, just, um, uh, we got a new film coming out too that just got released called Cold Love. It's a, it's a little, there's a section on, on Denali in there and uh, if anybody gets a chance to see that, that would be wonderful. We're starting to uh, put that uh, documentary out to uh, film festivals around the world and um, hopefully uh, I know it aired at the Anchorage International mm -hmm. Film Festival, and uh, uh, people seem to like it there. So we might do a little tweak and put a, a different ending to it now since I've made it up to Denali. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I know you said you're still a little numb, but I mean, when you think about that, you are the only person in the history of the world that has climbed Denali successfully in January by yourself. I mean, does that is that overwhelming for you to think about? Yeah, I might need to go see a psychiatrist. Actually. <laughs> Think, kind of thinking, you know, well, we'll see. I, I'm still numb about that. <laughs> you kind of have to be a little crazy to do that anyway. <laughs> what's, what's that? You have to be a little crazy to climb.